a dozen now confirmed tornadoes as a result of what you're seeing here in Faustin. Busted out windows, many cars, a complete loss, and a lot of businesses have got a lot of work to do, not only in repairing what they can, but also cleaning up this mess. You've got stones and rocks and bricks, all types of debris out here, all once again just thrown up by Sandy. But the big hit here in Atlantic City is this. This was the boardwalk. That historic boardwalk for Atlantic City. You've seen the photographs, you've seen the illustrations. 19 separate zones. They've been going house to house. And it's very similar to what you saw with Hurricane Katrina that's right, that's going right. through. You can see here the red X letting you know no one was home, no one dead inside. We have breaking news out of Baltimore City this morning. Crews worked overnight through these bitterly cold temperatures on a three alarm fire. And this morning, ABC 2 News Sheree Johnson is live on that scene with the details. And Sheree, if you can clarify for us quickly here, this was a commercial building, not a home, right? Baltimore County is now working to make schools safer for your children. The county has unveiled a plan to step up security. Right now, every middle and high school in the county has a school resource officer, but elementary schools don't. For those schools, the county wants to add more security cameras with live streaming video into police cars, the school's precinct, and county police headquarters. The horrible events at Sandy Hook are now again putting into focus renewed gun control laws and the call for them here in the U.S. But this morning, we're learning the community of Newtown, Connecticut, tackled stricter laws recently. After three hours of driving and a few starts and stops along the way, until further notice, we until finally closed. made it to the city. And from the outside, it didn't look like much damage had happened at all. Then we made our way downtown and saw a much different story. We arrived here in Atlantic City shortly after 930 and we're told uh, to come down to the inlet. That's where the bulk of the damage was. And you come down and the first thing you see is this, these homes, all new construction. Maybe they're vacation homes. Maybe people were living here. John Casey had to have help getting into Atlantic City last night. And when he arrived at his house, he saw what the floodwaters left behind. You see how the drywall's just, that's probably where the water was coming in and out, you know. Cam Cameron came to Baltimore in 2008 after a head coaching stop in Miami where he went 1-15. in And with an aging defense, a lot of emphasis was being placed on the Ravens offense. Hey, Megan, good morning to you. And over the past six days, they've been getting a few of these, but they have been getting a lot of these. Almost half a million BGE customers have been in the dark since Saturday. And because of that, they've been working in staggered 12-hour shifts here at the call center in Baltimore City, taking your phone calls, doing all they can to get the power back on. Did this yesterday, got some sound with Mr. Alamo as he was being brought into the courthouse, wanted to try to do it again. You see the squad cars coming in. This has been the caravan that has brought Alamo in every day for almost the past two weeks. How do you feel about your chances? Well, if they vote uh, according to the law, I'm out of here. And it's hot. Dave Bowman spent the morning running extension cords from his neighbor's home on the north side of the street to his south side home. He's in the dark and they have power. Uh, get my computer and my, uh, I'm gonna use again my neighbor's Wi Fi and hopefully I'll be able to get some office work done. Bowman's not stopping there. He's had several appliances up and running since Baltimore went dark last Friday. I got my sump pump, my freezer, my fridge, and an air conditioner. He's gotta keep his family cool, especially his two Huskies. And he's not the only one. <laughs> By the looks of things, you can count them. Almost a dozen extension cords running from one side of the road to the next. Neighbor helping neighbor in the most simple of ways. It doesn't get any better than that. BGE is saying they may not have power along Rosalie Avenue until Saturday, maybe even Sunday. And here's why. During Friday's storm, limb falls, knocks out a power line, and no one's come to fix it since. Testimony continues today in the case against Anne Arundel County Executive John Leopold. He's accused of misusing his security detail. Yesterday, those police officers who were assigned to him testified that they stood by while Leopold had sex in a vacant parking lot. One officer who took the stand claimed the sexual encounters happened at least once a week, and another officer was told to make sure that Leopold's live-in girlfriend didn't come in contact with the other woman. A man accused of stabbing a 17-year-old to death last summer will be sentenced today. Xavier Bates of Columbia killed Christian Massey Hall during a fight. Bates went to Hall's home, forced his way into his apartment, and stabbed him a number of times. The Felicia Barnes murder trial continues today. Yesterday, jurors saw a sex tape involving Felicia, her sister Dina, the defendant Michael Johnson, and Johnson's younger brother. Prosecutors claim Michael Johnson killed Felicia and dumped her body in the Susquehanna River. For anyone who's ever picked up a golf club, they'll have no problem telling you about the game's ups and downs. How, in one minute, it'll lift your spirits and 
Then the very next, it'll break your heart. Then you meet Vince Bicer, and you see exactly how this game is supposed to be. Simple, effortless, and fun. <laughs> now you got me laughing. And yeah, you saw that correctly. Vince plays the game with only one arm and one very big smile. <laughs> what is a bad day like for you on the golf course? You have hit three bad shots as long as I've been here. Uh, a bad day on the golf course is shooting 85 and above. About this time of year, most fans are putting up the orange and they're pulling out the purple and black, getting ready for the Ravens season. But the Orioles, they have unfinished baseball right now and some unfinished business for the stretch run into the playoffs. And now they are the hot ticket in the city of Baltimore. And why not? They've been playing spectacular baseball. I have got to introduce you guys to this lady. 47 years, she is a survivor. Miss Darlene, she's busy getting ready, guys. She's going to be going in the race once again. 47 years, Miss Darlene, good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? So good, so good to see you. Real quickly, hey, Steve, can we get a shot? Here in a second, we want to show you Miss Darlene's socks. Two more sleeps until Super Bowl 47, and we are all out in full purple pride mode. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Pringle. And I'm Charlie Krauss, and how'd you like that? Two more sleeps. Two more sleeps. Lynette, I'm just going to call him out. This, this is to prove how uncool Charlie is. He learned that that's <laughs> a phrase that it? the young people are using. Oh, wait, what, two what? more sleeps? Two and more now sleeps. he wanted to throw it out and try it. What do you think? <laughs> it's what the kids are saying these days. Oh, my God.